Hello there, welcome to a video of the Red Devils Den. It's the final week of the transfer window. We've had the Champions League draw. We have Arsenal on Sunday. Um, this isn't a Manchester United channel per se, but I am a Manchester United supporter, so that's what I talk about the most. Although I do like to talk about a lot of other other football as well, Premier League and whatever, because there's another big story that might be brewing with Mohamed Salah. They're still looking at trying to bring Mohamed Salah, but we'll look at that a bit later. Um, Champions League draw last night. It was um, interesting. Bayern Munich, Galatasaray, Copenhagen. Everyone saying Bayern Munich, Manchester United through. I won't be that confident. The reason for that is because anything can happen. We don't have a super strong squad. We have squad depth, but man, who is our squad depth? Anyway, um, I do think Bayern Munich will definitely go through. Harry Kane, who we wanted, he's probably going to score against us in the group stages. Could have been in our team, but he's not. Um, then the other thing that we, um, about the Champions League, I, before this transfer window, I really was was thinking, you know what, if Ten Hag brings in his five players, I'm talking Kim Min Jae, he brings in Amrabat, um, we get Harry Kane or Ozzemen, we have Hoyland as a, as a backup, you know, we, we, we look good, Mason Mount is in, Onana is in, um, we, we look good, I would have been like, you know what, we can go to the quarterfinals, semifinals. Now I look at it and I'm just like, getting out of the group stages, I'm totally fine with it because, yeah, I don't, this has not been a good transfer window. We missed out on a lot of our targets. He's kind of had to go to third, fourth, fifth choice, like pretty much all the managers before him. Um, and there's another argument to have there for, for another day. But the thing that I want to talk about just on the Champions League is that I'm just taking the Champions League as another cup. Like it's however further how far we go, I'll be happy about it. But other than that, there's other things we need to be focusing on, like the Carabao and the FA Cup and finishing fourth in the Premier League. So the Champions League, I'm glad we're in it. We deserve to be there. That's where we should be every season. But I think that's a long term, a long term goal, a long term objective. I don't think that we should be looking at winning the Champions League. I know anything is possible, but just looking at the Premier League teams, Arsenal, Man City, I mean, come on. Um, so I, I'm not really too focused on the Champions League. I'm glad we're there. I'm happy to be watching Tuesday and Wednesday night football and having Thursday night off, but it's not my main focus. And I don't really think that... As fans, we should be too optimistic about it. I know anything can happen, but I'm not super optimistic. I'm just happy that we're in it, and that's pretty much it. Today is the last day of the transfer window. Uh, last night, we got a huge shock. It wasn't Kukurea. It wasn't Tagliafico. It wasn't Alfonso Davies. <laughs> it was Sergio Reguilon of Spurs. I don't want to talk about that too much. It is what it is. We have a left back now. Let's hope he can do a job. Let's hope he can do well under Ten Hag. Um, hopefully the manager can see something good in him and he can fit into the squad perfectly and we can make it happen. Today, Amrabat should be announced. I'm assuming he will be now announced late in the day, late in the evening, so we have no more time to go and do any other deals. Scott McTominay is definitely not going to Fulham. Or Bayern Munich, there is no chance that he's going there. He's going to be staying for squad depth. Um, the thing I like about Amrabat, and I'm glad we're getting him, I don't know why it took so long to get him. We should have gotten him first and then seen if we had money to get a goalkeeper. There was nothing wrong with De Gea. We could have waited a year. Our defense was one of the best in the league last season. He won the golden glove. Anyway, moving on. Amrabat coming in, I think, is good. He can play next to Casemiro and he can fill in for Casemiro when Casemiro is not available. Um, and in a, I really, I don't think he'll be registered in time to play Arsenal, but a game like that is where I want to see how different we play with Casemiro and another similar midfielder next to him, like an Amrabat. Because then the midfield is balanced. We don't get overrun, which is what is going to happen on Sunday. But I'll talk about that in my preview a bit later on. The thing with, with Amrabat is he is robust, he's quicker, he's very similar to Casemiro and can do a job with him or when he's not even there. So I'm glad for that signing. We should have gotten it ages ago. We should have done what Liverpool did 
and buy three midfielders in that position who can play that position. Um, but we're not as efficient as them, unfortunately. So we just have to make do with what we have. I think Amrabat is a good signing. He will make the team better. He will add squad depth. He will take a lot of pressure off Casemiro, which will be very, very good. And that'll be the transfer window done, which I'm very, very glad for. A quick story. Harry Maguire is in the England national team. I mean, I'm pretty sure if I was British, Gareth Southgate would pick me for the English, for the England team. Like, he's pretty much picking anyone based on what? Why is Harry Maguire in the team? He has not played a minute of club, club football and possibly won't play a minute of club football for a long time. Victor Lindelof steps into the team with Varane out. How is Harry Maguire playing international football and going to start for England when there's so many? Anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I thought it was funny. Um, I did put out a short on it, um, which was quite funny. Please go, go check it out. Um, Harry Maguire in the England team, I can't understand it. I don't know why. It's just player power over everything. It's just mates rates. It, uh, but whatever, M moving on. This Sunday, we have a huge game against Arsenal. Um, the, the, first, the first four games of the season, um, this is going to be the biggest one so far. I know we had, we had Spurs, but come on. Um, it was it was Spurs, um, and I don't want to talk about it because it was a loss. Um, this Sunday could also be a loss. This Sunday is going to be a huge game. Um, I think playing at the Emirates Stadium, Arsenal will be fired up. Um, they will overrun our midfield if Amrabat is not available to play. Eriksen does not have the legs to to keep up with that midfield running at us. They've got Declan Rice. They've got Thomas Partey. Um, Odegaard, Saka, um, top, top elite players. We also have elite players and I'm hoping those players can tap into the elite mentality and put all this noise that has been around them, just put it to the side, get their heads down and just play the game. Um, the lineup is, it pretty much picks itself. Obviously if Amrabat's available, he, I'm assuming he'll come off the bench. We're looking at a possible debut for Hoyland. I don't think he'll start the game. He will definitely be on the bench. Um, the team picks itself. Anthony, Martial, Rashford, Bruno, Eriksen, Casemiro, Juan Bissaka. Oh, Juan Bissaka, Victor Lindelof, Martinez, Sergio Reguillon. <laughs> if he starts, I'm assuming he will start. Um, the team picks itself. I mean, it's it's... It's a team I have a lot of confidence in. Um, we don't have much coming off the bench if we need to turn to the bench. So I'm hoping we can seal the game off. Or I'm just hoping, this is the thing, if what happened against Nottingham Forest happens with Arsenal, it's it's over. If they score two goals in the first 10 minutes, the game is done. Um, we're not coming back. We're not, we're not going to be able to do what we did against Nottingham Forest. They're going to close up and they're going to do what elite teams do is... Cut, cut the game off, kill the game off. So I'm hoping that for at least the first 30 minutes, we can keep it tight. Um, we can play a high line against them. Um, I don't want us to sit deep and just hit on the break, um, although it could work with the pace of Rashford. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can just go the first half an hour without conceding a goal, looking solid, getting the, getting the defense structure good, I'm hoping Amrabat plays because he will be a huge, huge help in that midfield next to Casemiro. Um, I predict a loss for Man United. I don't see us winning this game. I know anything is possible, but I don't see us winning this game. Um, I'm hoping for a draw at most, but I see Arsenal pretty much um, beating us. Although Arsenal are known to drop points. Um, usually against teams you don't expect them to drop points against, but they do usually drop points. I'm hoping that's another day this this Sunday, but I'm not too hopeful about it. Um, I'm excited to see Amrabat. I'm going to see Region. Excited to see Hoyland. Um, lots of pressure on the young man. He's only 20 years old. Um, but who knows? He could have an amazing season and get 15 plus goals. You never know. Anything is possible. Uh, but yeah, we have a we have a, a, a packed weekend ahead. Uh, last day of the transfer window. Who knows? Anything can happen. We could get a year we go for Leon Goretzka. Um, who knows? 
we could get a year we go for Osimhen. I'm joking. Um, we're going to get Amrabat and then the window is going to be done. Uh, but please smash a like on the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments um, and I'll see you in the next